Yes, you did read that title right. Someone made a Sherp for SnowRunner. Now, this is a mod, and it is a premium access mod, and if you're curious about it or curious about getting your hands on it, of course, it is PC only. Um, there will be a link down in the description box down below where you can find more information about this mod. And that's really all the housekeeping we need to do about this thing, because other than that, it's a freaking Sherp. Look at this. Now, I haven't really driven it yet at all. I wanted to get my initial first impressions and then take it inside the garage go through all of the options, of which there aren't really all that many customization options. It's got a fixed engine, a fixed gearbox, a fixed suspension, but that kind of makes sense because look at it, look at what it is. It does have a couple of options, though, that I think are really cool and definitely worth noting, so we'll talk about those when we get into the garage. But let's go ahead and fire this thing up and uh, see what a Sherp in SnowRunner actually feels like, actually drives like, and really what it's all about. Now, this Sherp mod was made by Jeep EJK, and I will, of course, have their info down in the description below. And I do hope that I can manage to cover just about everything about this thing in this video, but if I do miss anything, Jeep -y, I'm sorry. But without any further ado, let's dive on into the garage. Well, actually, wait a minute. Let's first take a look at how it turns. I don't know how they did this, but look at that. The wheels on one side are completely stationary, and the wheels on the other side are actually, like, moving properly fast and causing this to almost, almost have a zero-turn radius. It, it's not quite, I mean, mm, is it? Well, it's, it's just about zero turn. Just about. I mean, it's about as close as you're going to get in SnowRunner to a zero turn. All right, let's go inside the garage real quick. Now, like I said before, engine-wise, you got one engine. You got one gearbox. You got one suspension. Not sure why the tires do that. Uh, you got one set of tires. You got one winch. It's very uh, direct, and kind of what you get is what you get in that category. Visuals-wise, you got a roll cage, which you can put on if you want, and we will be doing that, which actually has a really cool... A uh, light bar mounted up front. It's got a little bit of a roof rack. I don't know if I would call it a rack. I mean, I guess you could put some cargo in between the two ends. Um, and then it's got the light bars on the side as well. And I do believe that all of the light bars on this vehicle are fully functional. So we'll definitely test that out. Wheels-wise, you really, you got the one option. Don't worry about it. That's pretty much your option for wheels. Now, you've got the classic uh, Sherp Orange. But if you ever did want to change up the way those graphics looked, you actually have a full spectrum of colors that you can use... And what it does is it changes the uh, the color of the Sherp logo and of the graphics. The base layer will always kind of stay that sort of, I don't know if you would call it like weathered black or kind of wrinkle black paint. Either way, we're going to go with the classic Sherp orange for the logo and the graphics. But the option is there if you do want to do it. Although, sadly, you can't put beans on the dash. But you know what? I feel like, I mean, there's really not all that much room in here for beans. I mean, I guess beans could go like over there, maybe. But... I'm not going to really harp on that too much. All right, so let's actually take this thing out for a proper test drive. Now, let me look at the back one more time. There's a trailer hitch on it. Hold up. I need to actually go over to the trailer store. And I love, by the way, how you could do that. Like, in reverse, you could just whip this thing around on a dime. Whoa! Okay, so... I suppose if you wanted to haul a giant trailer with a Sherp, the ability is there for you. I don't know if it's advised, uh, but the option is there should you want to do it. Now, let's actually head on out to some testing. So, I gotta say, um, keeping it going forward, like, totally forward, is a little bit challenging. You're always doing a little bit of a walking motion uh, back and forth. You can get it to settle. You just have to be really careful with it. Like, you gotta make sure that when it actually does settle that you don't touch the stick. Because if you touch the stick, it will start to kind of wobble side to side. It is quick. It's quicker than I thought it was going to be, especially for what it is. Now, I'm just, you know, give me a moment here. Because this is a freaking Sherp and SnowRunner. And I am so excited that it's here. Because the only time that this entire franchise has ever had a Sherp was when the OG Spin Tires had their Sherp DLC. And they had, a, they had one like this. And then they had an extended one, which was kind of uh, interesting. Now, I did play around with those. And I made some videos about them on the channel. But I really was curious as to how a modded Sherp in SnowRunner would feel compared to how uh, those official DLC Sherps felt in the original Spin Tires. And I've got to say, this thing feels amazing. Let's give it some beans up the hill. 
Oh my god, yeah, um... Well, if you're ever worried about it rolling over backwards, don't be. It's not a concern. Also, let's actually set it to nighttime real quick and see what those lights look like. Oh my... Wow! That is so much light. There's no light on the rear other than the, uh, other than the, other than the brake lights. But, I mean, besides the rear, it's almost 360 degrees of lighting. That is wild. All right. Enough of middle of the night. All right, off we go. Oh, it's it's definitely raining now. Now, I would not advise using this thing for rock crawling, and I don't think many people are going to do that anyway. So we're not really going to test out the rock crawling capabilities of it because, again, it's not a flexi vehicle. It's not meant to, like, climb up over rocks. I mean, it could if you really wanted it to, but it's not meant to go to, you know off-road parks and go down trails. If that's what you want to do with it, you can. But again, it's not really the primary focus. I want to see what this thing is like in mud, especially when you put it in high and just throw it at the nearest mud bog. And so far, it, well, it's doing sherp things. It doesn't care. Uh, let's see. Are we going to stall it? Yep. I figured that it would be weird about, like, starting in high range and low speeds. And that makes sense because the type of drive line that these things have... I can imagine that if you tried to start it in a higher gear, it would try to bind up on you. Um, I don't have any direct experience of that, but it's... Yo, hold on. Wait a minute. It says, all-wheel drive not installed. And yet, it's... The all-wheel drive works, but, like, it says all-wheel drive not installed. That's so strange. I wonder if it's got something to do with just how it's set up. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of, like, trickery, wizardry going on that I'm not sure how it works. And really, at the end of the day, I, I can imagine you would need some wizardry and trickery to make a vehicle like this work in SnowRunner because, you know, there's not really any other vehicle in the game like this, you know? Something that's got a zero turn radius and no suspension and entire... Like, the suspension is the tires. That's the other thing about these Sherps is that the suspension or really the acting suspension is really the air pressure that you run in the tires. So let's see how it does through here. This should be where it shines. I'm going to put it in low instead of low plus for this, because even low is pretty quick. Like, low will get you moving. You'll never high center. You, look at it. You'll never high center on anything. Ever. High centering is a thing of the past. Also, approach and departure angle are things of the past as well, because, well, approach and departure angle are just for... God, their, their approach and departure angle concerns are so last week. I mean, if you if you want to get with the times, you need to get one of these. But, I mean, these things came out years ago. But still, easy. And boom. God, this thing is... I mean, I'm not surprised that it's good. I mean, it's a freaking Sherp. Of course it's going to be good. Oh, my God. Why is that so deep? Can we get out of it? Come on, Sherp. Uh, Yeah. Not only can we get out of it, but... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, that, that is trying to, uh... Okay, we're good. Ooh, that... Why is that so deep? I feel like that's not supposed to be so deep. I really... I, I, I don't remember that being that deep. I mean, I guess they left that there as a surprise. Holy smokes, that is... That is gnarly. All right, we're gonna go through this back trail right... Oh, my God. Can you follow the trail, please? You gotta be kind of gentle on the steering. Otherwise, it does jump around a little bit, which, again, we talked about that a little bit earlier, and I'm not all, all that surprised that it does that. It's just sometimes it'll catch you a little bit off guard. You do have to be on your game when you're driving this. Let's see. We want to do second and then high. Will it go for that? Uh, it will until you bind it up. And then when you bind it up, it's, well, uh... Done. <laughs> it's done until you get it back out of high range again. Because this thing is... It's such a different experience to just about anything else you could drive. I've got to take this out to, like, a proper mud park and see what happens when I do that. Because... The testing ground is one thing, but taking it out to, like, a proper mud park is going to be something else entirely. But I wanted to take it to the testing ground first because I wanted to see how it's stacked up against your typical, like, vanilla SnowRunner testing environment. And, oh my god, you want a gnarly scout. This is... Here's your gnarly scout right here. 
even this will probably not even phase it. Probably not even at all. Oh, what happens if we just go directly on? Oh my god. Oh my... Uh, up you go, maybe? No. No way. Okay, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. What about, like, ultra low? Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> that's a little bit out of its comfort zone. Okay, I think we found the limits of its climbing ability right there, but that's okay. I am totally understanding of finding the limit right there, and we're just gonna back away. Look at how it can rotate like that. Because it can rotate just about on a dime, you don't have to worry anywhere near as much about flipping over just because you're on the edge of something. You could just, like, you know, you could just, like, rotate right around the axis that you're on, and then it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm fine now. I'll just drive off of it. Into the swap! This is what the Sherp was designed for right here. Going through, like, muddy swamps with debris everywhere, and literally just not caring what was in the way, one way or the other. Most vehicles that you bring in here don't drive back out. And this, while we're in a little bit of a sketchy spot right now, I think we're going to be okay. Because I'm going to try to rotate it around. Rotate it, rotate it, and then bring it back directly ahead again. I think we'll be alright. Trying to work it. I want to get out of here without the winch. Come on. And there it is. Honestly, though... This thing is so good. This thing is so freaking good. And as long as the mud isn't, like, insanely deep, you'll be a-okay. If it's, like, super, super, super deep, you might have a little bit of an issue. But even then, I feel like a real Sherp would have an issue if the mud just got, you know, too insanely deep. Like, all of these vehicles have a limit, you know, whether that's a realistic limit or a theoretical limit. But they all have a limit one way or another. Oh, my God. Let's see what happens. Can we actually get some airtime? Oh, a little bit. A little bit. We've officially jumped a Sherp in SnowRunner. That's a thing. And, whoa, come on. Now it's finally time for the bridge jump. And I'm not ready. I mean, I'm ready, but I'm not ready. All right, we're going to get it up into, like, fourth gear, which we already know is pretty quick. Oh, my God. There's fourth. E easy. Little bit of a bounce, but because of the way it's shaped, it just literally bounces right back onto its tires and takes off again. Now, if y'all enjoyed this look at what I believe is the first Sherp ever modded into SnowRunner, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.